Welcome, everybody. Today, we are here for Revealed, the three secrets you need to know to become a successful choir director fast. And if you're here and you can hear us, could you please type in um, hello, just to be original. Lots of great people here. Uh, Diane, Jennifer, Mary, Helen, Alexandra, uh, Kali, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Jay, Andre, Timothy, Alexis. Thank you so much for being here. This is very exciting. Today is uh, more of a workshop than a webinar. And if you see my screen, you can see that it's called The Three Secrets That You Need to Know to Become a Successful Choir Director Fast. Uh, joining us today uh, is the man behind this whole project. His name is Vladimir Gorbik. He is the music director and chief conductor at the Holy Trinity St. Sergius Lavra. Uh, Vladimir is also senior assistant professor of conducting at the Moscow State Conservatory, which has officially been recognized as the best musical institution in the world. Uh, he is also artistic director and chief conductor at the Moscow Capital Symphony Orchestra and the first Grammy-nominated Orthodox choir director on the planet. I know we as Orthodox people don't really care about that, but you must agree that's pretty cool. Uh, at least I think so. He understands what it's like for you and me uh, who are struggling choir directors. Uh, he's um, an Orthodox Christian and he has been through it all. He's been, um, he has directed dozens of choir and taught thousands of students. So he knows what we are faced with. Uh, Vladimir has been to America multiple times and he's talked to multiple choir directors from Rokor and OCA and the Serbian church and the Greek church probably, am I right? And uh, yeah, Vladimir yeah. Knows, yeah. yes. So Vladimir knows what it's like in the West and this is why he's doing this project because uh, he has this deep desire to, uh, to help struggling choir directors in the West because the situation here with church singing, and I'm sure you know this and that's why you're here, the situation is, could be better, let's say that. So uh, right now, please say hello in the chat. Uh, let's see, uh, say hello to Vladimir, welcome him. Please uh, tell me if you're excited that he's here and if you're excited to learn what we're going to talk about today. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you. People are saying so excited. That's that's great because I'm so excited. I can barely keep not keep from bouncing on my chair. I've got to tell you. Um, so I uh, we're here today for the three secrets that every choir director needs to know to become a good choir director. And um, spoiler alert, when I learned some of these secrets, it changed things for me almost overnight. So uh, here's a little disclaimer. Uh, a lot of times when you're holding these events, uh, people will say, people have a concern. They have a concern that we're gonna be selling something and they're really worried about this. And they say, are you gonna be selling? Are you gonna be pitching? So I would really love to just relieve all of your concerns and um, all of your fears and say that we are going to be opening up an opportunity at the end of this webinar. Uh, but the thing is, is that there will be very limited spots and most people will not even probably qualify. So uh, the reason is uh, because Vladimir is uh, going to train uh, some people and he has limited time because he's, uh, you know, we saw in, the, in his credentials, he's a very busy man. But uh, we are going to present this opportunity to you after we've talked about uh, the three secrets. And if you feel that we've given you enough value and then uh, we will ask your permission. And if you're okay with it, we will present you the opportunity, but only with your permission. So uh, is this fair? Can you tell me in the chat if this is fair? Please type in fair if you agree with what I said. Let me see, fair, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. So we're talking about three secrets. And uh, one more thing I wanted to say, uh, this is Vladimir's stuff. And the reason I'm talking so much to you, I'm sure that's annoying, but uh, the reason is it's just because I speak English a little bit faster than Vladimir. Um, yes, <laughs> so I've been Vladimir's student for a number of years and he has completely, completely changed my life. I went from feeling totally powerless, upset, not wanting to go to church to direct, uh, being super mad at my poor seniors to being comfortable and knowing what I'm doing and knowing that I am the one who has control. So Vladimir, would you like to say anything? Hello, everybody. 
when I had my first master class in uh, 2012 in June, I saw many struggle uh, conductors who um, wanted to learn church conducting under my direction. And for many, uh, for eight years, I visited the USA many times for my master classes. And Alona is one of my excellent students. Uh, she's a successful choir director, as I know. We had 10 webinars for a few days. And I think this is a wonderful time for learning this difficult issue as church choral conducting and church singing, orthodox singing. I'm very happy to see many names on the list, um, which I see every day for these 10 days. Uh, if anybody has any questions about what we've been doing or what we're about to do, please type in the chat. So here, I'm sure you've had time to read on the screen. This is from Alexey Dyakov. He's been one of our guests at our webinars. And he says that uh, he was struggling for a very long time. He wanted his choir to sound so much better, but they're in a very, very tiny little parish. But uh, because he started with Vladimir, uh, he, he says that he, it sounds so much closer to the ideal that he was striving for. Um, and then, so Sergei is also one of Vladimir's students. Sergei used to be not professional musicians when we met. He became a professional musician under my director, uh, direction. This answers some of the questions that, um, that we've had. Uh, the thing is, I think, is uh, because Vladimir's and my first language is Russian, when we say professional musicians, we don't necessarily, uh, we never mean that it's somebody who is being paid for what they do. Uh, yeah. In the Russian mind, professional musician is somebody who is educated, but it does not mean that you have, uh, you know, a diploma from somewhere or, uh, you know, uh, or that you finished a certain amount of classes. It means that you're constantly striving to improve. And that means that we're including all of you in this, uh, in this uh, term. So uh, as far as we're concerned, as long as you're trying to improve yourself, you are a professional. So again, thank you for being here today with us. Our sponsors are the Fund for Assistance to Rocor um, and uh, the Healthy Tea Room. Huh? And uh, the next thing I wanna say is despite what you might think, you can do this, I promise. Because I did this, and if I did this, you can do this. I promise you. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to try and um, find some another file that I want to share with you. And uh, full disclosure, some of this uh, presentation is recorded because I wanted to avoid the technical difficulties that we always have. Most of you don't know me. My name is Alena Plavšić, and I am a successful choir director. It's still weird to say, I wasn't born that way. I spent far too much time struggling to get to anything resembling success. And I want to tell you that you are not alone. I know what you're feeling. No matter how hard you work, no matter how many hours you put in, no matter how good your singers are, your choir still sounds awful. And the worst thing is, you know you're not helping your parish to pray. Working with a choir to create music is one of the most fulfilling experiences of this life. Sadly, most directors will never get a chance to truly know what that's like. You see, it's nearly impossible to find a great and accessible training for Orthodox choir directors. I know, because I've tried nearly everything before I finally had my breakthrough. In fact, I struggled for months until I finally cracked the code. You know how it is. You love church, you can sing, you know the tones. So when your church has a need, you agree to help. And suddenly you're the choir director. Even if you don't have formal musical education, even if you can barely read music, and even if you're terrified out of your mind, you want to give back and help your church. This is what happened to me. I'd been substituting for choir directors at different parishes for many times over the years. 
but I was never interested in becoming a real choir director who serves every weekend. That all changed when I was approached by a desperate priest. He had no one else to ask for help, so he turned to me. In hindsight, I was probably an obvious candidate to become his choir director. After all, I did have seven years of piano training and 20 years on the clitoris, but that meant nothing. Directing a choir demands a special skill that most people simply don't have. And I'm not kidding when I say that I definitely didn't have that special skill when I started as a choir director. Now, if you're starting to feel embarrassed, don't. You're not alone. These choir directing skills are taught only to select music majors in college. If you love Orthodox music as much as I do, you will understand my frustration when it turned out that my choir was incapable of reproducing the beautiful pieces we had in front of us on the music stands. I knew my choir was capable of doing so much better. So I started to read books. I studied other choir directors technique. I even watched videos on YouTube. I did everything I could to improve my meager skills. But no matter how closely I tried to imitate the great conductors in the videos, I still wasn't good enough. Worse, I knew I wasn't getting it right. Sure, I could imitate some of the movements, but I didn't know why they were needed. So they didn't work. I remember a service when one choir member openly mocked me as we were singing. She told everyone with an earshot that I was doing everything wrong and that she could do so much better. It took everything I had to keep going as if nothing happened. And once I got home, I cried for hours because the painful truth was she was probably right. I was so humiliated and upset. I never wanted to conduct ever again, but I didn't have a choice. After all, I was the official director. The priest and the congregation were relying on me and I knew I could not let them all down. So I decided to take action. I decided to improve my bed directing. I spent months trying different things and continued to see zero results. I felt like I was banging my head against the wall. My frustration and excessive anxiety led to the point where I was afraid of going to church. That's when I completely lost my passion for creating beautiful liturgical music that would help people pray. Because the music we were creating could hardly be even called music. It was excruciatingly painful to hear. Yet we tried the best we could. But just when I was about to give up, a friend of mine introduced me to somebody. A world famous Orthodox choir director who could solve our awful singing situation. His name was Vladimir Gorbik. You can imagine how very excited I was to meet him. So I got on a call with him and he completely blew my mind, especially when he told me, the quality of a choir depends on the quality of its director's hands. I had no idea what he was talking about. In fact, I was a little disappointed. I was expecting some kind of groundbreaking advice. And he told me something that sounded so basic instead. But after the call, I started to think about it and I realized I really had nothing to lose by trying out his advice. So I took on Vladimir's initial advice and put it into action. I saw a small immediate improvement in my choir. I was really excited by what I saw. And when Vladimir offered to mentor me in directing, I knew it was the right move to make. I'll admit I was a little hesitant at first. He's a world famous director. So I was a little intimidated at first, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized he had the expertise to help me succeed. So I accepted his offer and boy, am I glad I did. The first time I got up the courage to try one of his techniques during the service, I was blown away. Let me turn on a video so you can hear Vladimir's comments. I love it. Hands are too high. This is bad. I love it. Left hand doesn't know what must it do. The quiet things only follow Alona's right hand. This is a problem too.
Alanus elbows are too far from her body. Alanus head repeats movements of at your right hand. This is bad. Alana uses it is in the one. There are a few different techniques for conducting in one, in two, in three. We see uh, the conducting only in one, and this is a problem. This is not good. I also don't see three wrist. When singers see not free wrist, they will not sound correct. Also, I had some problems with giving the pitch too. So to summarize, uh, my left hand and my right hand are do uh, my both my hands are doing the same thing, and they shouldn't be. Uh, my wrists are rigid. Uh, they they're not singing correctly because my wrists are rigid. Right. Right. Alona is holding her arm very well, much better. She has full control of her choir. I like movements of your wrist. They are very soft. It felt like my hands were emanating a powerful force. And that force controlled my choir's breath, their voice, and their tempo. Yet most of our singers had never had music lessons. It was a group of dedicated amateurs who loved to sing, but we didn't sound very good. But once I applied the first few things I learned, we no longer sounded disjointed. We started working together instead of against each other. It was absolutely unbelievable. I had never felt so elated and powerful before because my singers didn't change, the acoustics didn't change, we hadn't been practicing for a while, but I had changed. And that was the only thing that was needed. I finally understood why people love directing so much. I'd always loved singing in church, but directing was a different way to serve God. After the service, the clergy and parishioners told us how well we sang. It was an amazing feeling. After months of struggling, I finally held the secret to a beautifully sounding choir, and it was literally in my hands. So I started working harder. I knew now that so long as I was doing what Vladimir taught me, we sang better and better. After that initial success, I was asked to direct a choir at a parish feast day, a few hours away from where we used to live. I'd never sung with that choir but they needed a choir conductor to help them because the bishop was coming. At the time, they had a professional musician directing them. Let's call him John. He knew all about music theory, musical expression, key signatures, you name it. All the things that I'll probably never learn. Because unlike me, John was a true professional musician. He'd spent many years training and then teaching music. I remember how beautifully he held his hands, how elegant his gestures were. But the priest and the singers were dissatisfied with how their choir sang, and for good reason. When I saw him conduct the vigil on the eve of the parish feast, I could immediately tell what he was doing wrong. Despite all of his knowledge and experience, John had no control of the choir. The singers didn't do what he wanted, and everybody was miserable. 
John, the choir members, and even the parishioners. The next morning, it was my turn to direct. I felt like an imposter taking John's place. For a minute, I was sure we would fail and sound even worse than we had yesterday. But then I raised my arms and we started to sing. We sang well, really well. They obeyed every movement of my hands, even though we'd never sung together before. It was like magic. And the singers were so happy. So many of them came up to me to say how much they enjoyed singing with the real choir conductor. I laughed in my sleep. If they'd only known just how much less education I had than their own choir director. But in the end, it didn't matter because it wasn't about formal education. It was about applying the basics. I realized that I was now able to direct other choirs. The system was working no matter where I was. Eventually, people started coming up to me and saying, can you teach me? They knew I'd been struggling and saw the unbelievable and fast transformation. And they wanted it too. So I taught them what I could, and they too have changed for the better. And so did their choirs. And the crazy thing is, they didn't need to get a musical degree, yet they were able to help their choir sing beautifully and prayerfully. They only needed to know some basic things nobody really teaches. As you listen, you'll discover exactly what Vladimir taught me. You'll know exactly what to do to command your singer's attention. You'll find out how to start and end singing together and beautifully, and how to truly become the leader of your choir. But that's not all. You'll also find out how you can get a free consultation with Vladimir Gorbik himself, which is a $200 value. But before we go further, I do need to tell you, most people won't be a great fit for what I'm about to share, even if they claim that they love directing. So I do want to give you the chance to bow out now, no hard feelings, by explaining the four reasons why this opportunity might not be for you. Reason number one, you already know everything there is to know about directing an Orthodox choir. Your chanters respond to your directing exactly the way you want them. Your parishioners tell you your singing helps them pray. Your choir sings like one being. If you truly are confident that you don't need help in this, glory be to God. You don't have to waste any more time listening because the system I'm talking about is only for those who know a lot less than you. Reason number two, you think an Orthodox choir is supposed to sound bad. Believe it or not, some people think that striving for a better liturgical sound is sinful. That learning to direct better can harm your parish prayer life. That you should learn to do better if you're a priest, I can painter, definitely a cook. But you should never learn to be a better singer or director. Reason number three, you don't want to put in any work. Learning to do anything at all requires time and discipline. If you don't have either, this is not for you. Reason number four, now is not a good time. I've often put things off I needed and wanted to do until a better time, but I've learned that a better time never comes. So if I put it on the back burner today, it will probably stay there for a very long time. Or as we say in Russian, нет ничего более постоянного, чем временное. There is nothing more permanent than something temporary. If any of these reasons apply to you, then fair enough. I wish you all the best in your choir directing journey. But if your situation is giving you pain, if you want your choir to sound good enough for a divine service, if you want to help your congregation pray and make them feel like they don't know if they're in heaven or on earth, if you want to have the confidence and joy in your skill as a choir director, if you're after that elusive orthodox sound, if you want all of these things and more, then please allow me to introduce you to the Gorbik method. This system was developed by Vladimir Gorbik, especially for directors without a lot of musical education. Vladimir is someone who knows what it's like for you. He is a deeply humble Orthodox Christian who has directed dozens of choirs and taught thousands of students all over the world. He has taught both professionals and amateurs. Vladimir has also done many master classes in the States. Now, after 20 plus years of teaching all over the world, Vladimir has developed a new and exciting program. This program is designed especially for Orthodox choir directors in the Western world. 
Because as you know, directing in an Orthodox parish comes with its own set of rules and challenges. It's sad, but true. Taking lessons from your local secular trained music teacher is just not enough. Because even if you're a brilliant singer and conductor, you still need to know how to sing appropriately for the Orthodox Church, how to direct the tones, how to give the pitch. But that's not all. Because our first task as choir conductors is to help our parish pray. As a director, you're responsible for the spiritual condition of the whole congregation during the service. So even if you've got the music part down perfectly, but your choir is not listening to you, each singer is trying to sing louder than the rest, there's more than one leader on the clitus, it prevents your congregation from praying. And until now, hardly anyone has been talking about this in the West. That's what the Gorbik method is all about. Here you will learn everything you need. It's the easy to follow formula that will help you become the best choir director you can possibly be, even if you have no musical education. So here it is, the three-step choir directing formula that will change your choir forever. This formula is responsible for the success of dozens of choirs and choir directors all over the world. Is this helpful at all so far? Could you type in uh, one if you're finding it helpful? Thank you. Thank you, Olga and Catherine, uh, Alexis, Celeste, Juliana, Diane, Priscilla, Anne, Erica, Jeanette. Thank you so much. So let me get back to it. Uh, so uh, the three-step choir directing formula, Vladimir has been refining it over 20 plus years of his, um, uh, of his experience. And uh, if you use it, you can direct any choir confidently. Uh, best of all, it's so simple that anybody can use it even if you don't have any musical education whatsoever. So let's get, back, uh, let's get to the uh, three steps that you need uh, to become a successful choir director fast. Number one, uh, learn the correct hand position. This sounds super basic and actually it is, but without it, even if you're a brilliant singer, if you do everything else right, everything's gonna fall apart. Because as Vladimir says, our hands are the foundation of the choir. Once I mastered this skill, I saw unbelievable results because there's nothing worse as a choir director when you're trying to lead and instead you feel that you are being led by singers who do not respond, by singers who are just set in their ways. But once you apply this hack, uh, you will see that even though they might be set in their ways, you still have control over them. And it's not a bad kind of control. It's just, it's almost like, you know, it's the force. So uh, it's, it's a heady feeling. It's probably the closest to magic you're going to ever feel. And it's good magic. Orthodox magic. Also, once you figure out how to do this, uh, you'll start noticing really interesting things. Uh, you'll be able to just glance at a choir director and see that if they're good or not, because some choirs, uh, choir directors direct with their, with their voice, their head, their fingers, their fists, um, their feet, again, I'm serious, and their pelvis. And you can't unsee that, believe me. I, I wish you to never see that. Um, so they use anything but their hands. And if you talk to them about it, they're going to say, what do you mean? Of course I directed with my hands. But um, they're not even aware of the problem. That's why results are, are so poor. But in the Gorbik method, you will be able to master this and uh, you will be able to find out the correct hand and arm position, which is incred incredibly important, if, even though, yes, it does sound super basic. So this will allow your choir to know exactly what you want from them it, without you having to explain yourself. Because if you have to explain, that means you're not doing it right. Your hands are built to explain everything that you need to acquire without using your mouth. So step number two, step number two is learning how to give the pitch in any situation whatsoever. Uh, most church music is written in very simple keys, F major, you know, A minor, uh, and so forth. So giving the pitch should be 
easy enough, but um, sadly, this is not always true. Um, for most choir directors who have not had musical education, and I'm not trying to put them down, um, you know, it's just it's just the sad reality. They've been thrust into this situation where they have to take on so much responsibility, but often they've never even seen a good choir director. So they have to do everything themselves. They have to take on this huge weight. So they learn a couple of chords and they apply it to everything. Uh, and with disastrous results. For example, uh, I knew this one choir director who struggled with her pitch for years. And every Pascha, it was the same situation. They insisted on singing this one beautiful Christ is Risen. Uh, and the same thing happened. The choir would uh, mess up on Pascha in the 40 days afterwards. Uh, they would mess it up completely mess it up. They would fall apart. The service would stop, uh, you know, come to a crashing halt. Everybody would be looking up and wondering what's going on. So it, it always disrupted the service, but they really, really wanted to do this. And the funny thing is, is that they always did it really well during practice because there was a piano. So, you know, what was happening? You know, they couldn't figure out. So she wanted to help them. So she started, she thought she had a great idea. You're never going to guess. Uh, her idea was to give the wrong pitch on purpose. And she thought that that would solve the problem. Uh, in case you didn't uh, hear that sarcasm in my voice, please don't do that. Uh, because you can never sing anything right if you give the wrong pitch. So fortunately, very few conductors do that. I'm sure you've never done that. Um, so uh, sometimes... If you've ever wondered why that happens, sometimes the first chord, if you look at it, if you look at the key signature, it looks like it's a major chord. So the intention is to give, you know, a major pitch and, uh, but it's a minor piece. So what happens is the choir will always fall apart. Maybe if they're professional, professionally trained, you know, very high level sight read very easily, maybe they will not, but most choirs uh, will fall apart. Uh, if I've, if I got a penny for every time I saw this, I would really be set for life. So there's an incredibly easy way to avoid this pitfall. Um, and you're gonna learn about this within the uh, Gorbik method. Uh, Vladimir taught me that, um, Vladimir taught me that the one way to avoid this pitfall is to give two pitches. And it sounds kind of funny, but it solves the problem so easily and you don't ever have to worry about that. Um, I have a question from Suzanne. She says, can you do that again? The video didn't show what you did wrong. Oh, I can show you. My arms were out, my elbows were too too far. I was conducting, I, it, it's, and I was having a hard time giving the pitch. So I, oh, and I had, sometimes I had chicken hands, you know. <laughs> But let's go back to step number three, and that is uh, the third thing that we need to know to be a successful, excuse me, successful choir director. Uh, the third thing you absolutely need to know how to do is how to make your choir sound orthodox. If you don't think that's important, please listen to this story. I had the misfortune to hear a Traparian to St. Gregory de Palmas sung as a jazzy little number. And the choir director enjoyed it so much that she uh, kept up the beat with uh, her foot in a big white sneaker and a wave of her fingers. So it was a song and a dance. And I promise you, you never, ever want to see this in church, especially in your own parish. Um, you cannot unhear that, you cannot unsee that, and I'll always have that image in my head. So uh, the purpose of this step, the get your choir to sound orthodox is that you never have to deal with anything like this because orthodox singing is very different. Um, and most choirs, most choirs in the West, they have a Protestant sound and there's nothing wrong with that uh, if they're singing in a concert hall at Protestant church, but it's not appropriate for, um, uh, for an orthodox parish. Uh, so, what you don't want is for your choir to sing inappropriately in your parish. So for example, you definitely don't want to sound like opera, right? Lounge, gospel, bluegrass, and pop. I've heard it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Again, this seems basic, but uh, you won't believe how many choir singers have beautiful voices and they sing really lovely, but uh, their sound is distinctly off. Uh, 
so uh, by now, you know that to be a successful choir director in the Orthodox Church, you need to learn three things, hands, pitch, and sound, right? So these steps are the formula to your success. And once you've mastered these three things, you won't recognize your own choir. And I'm a living testimony to that. Um, there's been, I've seen quite a few times where people who have sung really badly, suddenly a, a choir director who has been trained uh, by Vladimir Gorbik comes up in front of them and, you know, and does their thing. And all of a sudden it sounds like a different choir. It's unbelievable. And I've had uh, the joy of experience, uh, experiencing it myself as well. Um, so do you think Vladimir Gorbik and his Gorbik method can help you become a much better choir director? Type in yes, I want to see who's excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm very excited for you. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I just want to say that choirs and um, choir directors have been around since the Old Testament times, and people learned through observation and imitation. And the reason I'm saying this is because you can do this because you were built to do this. You don't have to get a musical degree. You don't have to take a bunch of prerequisites that you're never going to use. Um, you will be able to do this very shortly with the help of Vladimir Gorbik. And once you learn the correct, the natural way to direct, your singers will respond automatically. You will not need to train your whole choir just because you got trained. Um, in a moment, I will uh, tell you more about how you can learn this. But first, I wanted to share a few, a few more things that uh, Vladimir's students are saying. Vladimir wants you to surpass your potential. He wants you to surpass his potential. He does all of this in order to keep alive the rich tradition of singing in the church choir for the glory of God. This was from Nikon Schuler, who is one of our uh, panelists, actually. And then there's, there's, this is my favorite story. This is from Raman Hityov from, from Saratov, Russia. Um, <laughs> if you have any doubt about Vladimir's unbelievable teaching ability, listen to this. Even though I had absolutely no musical education, and even though I had to compete against others who spent their whole lives learning music, Thanks to Vladimir, I was able to pass my entrance exams into the Saratov State Conservatory. I am now a professional choral conductor. Thanks to the knowledge Vladimir gave me, I have participated at multiple nationwide choral conductor competitions and won multiple awards. I still consider him my teacher and mentor. I often ask him for professional or life advice, and he always helps me. My dream of becoming a professional musician and choir director has come true only thanks to my teacher, Vladimir Gorbik. I, I seriously, I just love that story. Uh, one thing that might not be clear is uh, in Russia, when you want to uh, study at a university, you have to pass entrance exams, and there's such a thing as competition. So you have five people, uh, there's only one place, right? Only uh, one seat, let's say seat, right? And they're only accepting five students and there. So there's like 55 people who are competing for that one seat. So this guy without any musical education, well, you know, formal musical education, he gets in and he goes on to win nationwide prizes. That's just, that's, that's what you're listening to right now. You know, this is the person who sits there very, very quietly. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's quiet, but he knows what he's doing. So, okay, so you might be wondering, so with all of these students achieving such high success, you know, the professional musicians and stuff, why is Vladimir doing this? Why is he opening up this uh, exclusive training? So uh, the reality is very simple. Um, your success as an Orthodox choir director means a strengthened Orthodox church. And that is something that's very dear to Vladimir's heart. He has a very special place in his heart for the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia and OCA and just the Orthodox who are struggling in the West because it's he knows himself that it's, um, he's told me many times that it's, it's a very different reality and there are a lot of challenges that, um, that just don't exist when a country is, you know, 
considered Orthodox, at least. So uh, Vladimir told me that uh, our church is a church militant here on earth, and she needs strong and powerful warriors. I'm sorry, the Russian accent comes out. Uh, the faithful armed with fasting and prayer are warriors. And a strong choir director attracts strong singers for the defense of our church. And the strengthening of our holy church and faith means everything to us. So, uh, as you know, church music can make or break a parish, especially if it's a mission parish, uh, because the difference between prayer and dreaming, if the choir is good, or prayer and suffering, if the choir is terrible, um, you know, you just, you don't need that. So, uh, if you're ready to um, take your choir to the next level, if you're ready to quickly become a real choir director, and if you want your choir to finally sound orthodox, then if I have your permission, I am going to talk about the Korbik method and uh, how it is the easiest way to become the best choir conductor possible. Because the thing is, you know, uh, when I was a struggling choir director, I didn't have this. I didn't know about Vladimir for a long time. So I was reading books. I was, I was looking high and low. I was going to uh, uh, secular uh, musicians for training, for both voice and you know, some conducting. And it was a, it was a disaster. I kept, I kept wasting all the time trying to explain that this is not done in the Orthodox Church. And he looks at me and he says, "That's not possible. Everybody does that. You know, you're not supposed to sing this well in church. You're supposed to." produce a joyful noise and that's all you can demand and that's good enough for God. You know, but there's so many things that there's just, it's the mentality is very different. So um, I, f I remember just what it was like when I was looking for help with my directing and I kept stumbling on uh, programs that had prerequisites. You know, I had to have so many years of what we call music school or, you know, the higher level of music school in Russia. Uh, but once I crossed path with Vladimir, everything changed. Uh, he found out what I needed and he told me, this is what you got to do. Okay, you start doing this and this and this. And um, that was it, you know. Um, in other words, he his program allows you to start right now, to jump right in where you need to be at your own level. So you improve, you start from where you are. You don't have to be up here to start. You have to be where you are. Most teachers that you see out there, they sell classes and sometimes it's absolutely wonderful but the thing is is that classes are often a way to nowhere it's uh it's like a map without a destination uh they're a dead end because they won't take you where you need to go you don't see that final destination uh to achieve success you need systematized knowledge and a proven guide who will take you there and correct you as you're going there and that's why we're talking today about the Gorbik method because um, it provides a roadmap to your success as an Orthodox choir director. Uh, dozens of choir directors all over the world have talked about how uh, the Gorbik method has helped them change. They, it helped them uh, transform themselves and their parishes. And it's all because they are able to do this. Um, and if it worked well for them, you know, it, it will work for you. So um, there are three things that every choir director needs to know. To gain complete control of the choir using nothing but your hands. To effortlessly give the pitch in any situation. And to achieve a prayerful sound. So our game-changing steps are your hands, the pitch, and the sound, right? Um, so I didn't have anything like this. So I'm very, very honored to be offering this program to you. Uh, we'll be dropping a link in the chat very soon where you can see what it is. Um, and the good thing is, is that, you know, this search has been done for you. You don't have to search for the new, for the new instructor because we've done it for you. And so now that I gave you my heart and soul and told you about how I failed over and over again, <laughs> I hope it's okay if we, we start talking about this opportunity. So um, do you want to find out about this opportunity? Please type in yes in the chat if you are ready for this. Thank you, Diane and Denise and Helen and Suzanne, Alicia, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
the course is um, called the Gorbic Method. And here's everything you're going to be getting. So the course itself includes a total value of $5,651. So it has information packed training videos, a value of $3,793. Then we have additional deep dive videos into special topics and choir directing secrets. Gotta, can't miss that one. An access, uh, access to, to a private support group. Now this is incredibly important because if you want to succeed, you cannot be alone. You only, not only do you need a mentor, but you also need a community. You need support. You need to be able to say, hey, does anybody else have this problem when directing? And I can't tell you how helpful it is to talk to somebody who's on your level. Um, and another great thing is a monthly coaching calls with Vladimir. This is a completely new thing and we're very excited about it, but, uh, it, this is going to help you answer all of your questions, anything that you ever, you know, need about anything about choir directing, be it technique, be it, you know, um, a relationship with a difficult singer because Vladimir has helped me with that too. You know, he's been incredibly helpful in telling me, uh, suggesting what to do in a, very, in a bunch of very difficult situations because he has, you know, he has almost 25 years experience. So that's, that's really great. It's really helpful. Um, so, you know, we're, nobody's going to charge you $5,000 for this. If he wanted to pay for his expenses, it would, uh, he would charge $5,000, but he knows that's, that's not possible and he's not going to do that. Uh, his whole life has been dedicated to Orthodox music and he is on a mission. And that mission is to help struggling choir directors just like you at a price that they can afford, that you, that you can afford. So uh, because Vladimir knows that God deserves our best and he wants you to be able to give God your best for a short time, for a very short time, you are able to get the Gorbic method for $297. And that includes all of these things that you see on the screen. And uh, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is a beta. So that means there are a few kinks that need to be worked out. So we're confident that even despite that, you are going to get tremendous value from this. Again, I remember my first lesson with Vladimir and what he told me, and I was so skeptical, and I did it, and it just was unbelievable. The result was unbelievable from one lesson. And this is uh, a lot cheaper than, you know, just getting a couple of lessons. And you can watch the videos over and over again, and you have ac access forever. We are offering this to you at the special price of $297. Um, to encourage you to uh, to explore this platform before we raise the price and that could be you know very soon any day so please don't delay so with the Gorbic method you'll be able to go from struggling choir director to thriving right you'll be able to stop doubting yourself this is the end of step uh, of self-doubt this is this one thing is worth i don't know how much because you know i've been there where you're just standing there and somebody's mocking you somebody's you know huffing and puffing and they do know a lot more than you but sometimes you have somebody who's you know rolling eyes at you even though they know nothing i had somebody who was tone deaf and he said he kept saying how I was doing everything wrong and he would do everything so much better and I didn't know anything. Uh, but anyway, you know, by then I already took some lessons from Vladimir. So I knew, you know what, I know what I know. And I'm being taught by this person who knows so much and uh, he's learned so much in 25 years and he's directed all over the world. So, you know, he, uh, he knows everything about there is to know about Orthodox choir directing. So it gives you so much confidence when you have, when you know what to do with your hands. And there's only so much you need to know now before you can be successful. And by successful, I mean when you're, um, you're becoming better and you can hear it and your parish is starting to pray and you're not being distracting as a choir, you're being helpful, you're being a true leader of prayer. You, finally, you stop feeling underprepared. So, um, you know, it's your choice ultimately, because um, do you want to keep suffering? I did for many years. I do not wish it on anybody. You know, it's really painful when you, you know, you're not doing well. You're serving in church. It's not like you're doing a, 
menial job somewhere and it's so it doesn't matter if you mess a few things up this is church this is the holiest of holies and you keep messing up as a struggling choir director one of the worst things that the worst doubts that you can have in your mind is am i is my directing good enough for god am i putting in the effort for god and if this is effort am i am i just you know am i lying to myself because it's like often you think oh it's good enough it's okay you know you don't want that that's that's painful and that's not helpful so you can start your journey to giving god your best directing today what is it worth to you what is it worth to your priest what is it worth to your parish is this worth doing do you want to become better do you want to become a better choir director and uh, i honestly i don't think you can put a price tag on that i paid a lot more than 297 dollars when i was training with vladimir and it was really worth it uh, it was it was a stretch but I did it and I'm, I'm so much happier with that. And um, it was one of the best experiences of my life personally. So and I don't mind saying that also. Um, if you join today, we have a very special bonus for you. It's a free 20 minute consultation with Vladimir. It's a value of $200. And this consultation is invaluable because uh, Vladimir will point to pinpoint your struggles and find the best possible ways to overcome them. And sometimes, you know, it's just, you just think, you think you're wrong here, but okay there. And it's completely the opposite. Uh, because Vladimir has, I don't know how many people he's, he's taught, you know, thousands probably because, you know, in his 20 plus years, it's, and he always has students. Um, and even one of our panelists, uh, Milan Achimovic from Belgrade, uh, he said that he wants to go and study with Latvia in, in the Moscow Conservatory. And he's already, you know, he's a, he's, he directs the choir, the male choir in the main cathedral of Belgrade. So they sing the patriarchal services. This is who we're talking about. See, so, and fortunately for us, Vladimir accepts all levels. So he takes anybody who doesn't, uh, who doesn't know, anything about music to somebody like Milan Achimovic, you know, so it's, um, and he can, he can teach anybody. Um, so grab your copy of the Gorbic Method today, and then you're going to get the free 20 minute consultation with Vladimir. Uh, we're going to, uh, he's only going to be able to accept the first five people who buy. Um, and if you, oh, by the way, it's completely risk free because if you don't like it, you have 30 days to, um, to get the, your money, your money back. Also, I would like to show you one more thing, and this is um, a critique that Vladimir did for one of his students. Our elbows, like a foundation of our con uh, conducting technique. When we set our elbows too wide, for example, an eagle, condor eagle, too proud. Okay. That's too proud, N not humble. Mm -hmm. We need to be humble, right? We need to be obedient. So please, like this. <laughs> and I would like to see your left hand maybe more free. Mm -hmm. I love freedom in my hands and my arms. And I know, I, I am sure that you can do that. So uh, this is Vladimir in action. Actually, he's uh, critiquing one of his students. You're going to have a lot of fun with him. When he teaches you, you're going to be, you know, thinking in images a lot. So Suzanne, this is an answer to your question. It's a follow-up. The way you control the choir or the congregation in this, um, in this instance is you have to know how to, hold your hands, hold your arms, right? And if you remember in the first video, I had, you know, chicken hands, chicken arms. So you can't control anything like this. And Vladimir just said, uh, get into your car and try driving like this. How are you gonna be able to drive? There's no, you don't have any power in your arms, right? But try driving like this, you know, like a normal person does. And then all of a sudden you have power. Same with directing. Uh, I also thought that maybe when you're kneading dough, Try kneading it like this. 
and see what happens or kneading it like this with force. And this is this is a great, you know, one of the secrets that he just gave away. Um, so that's, um, and it's unbelievable the difference it makes. Again, if you want to try it and you can't conduct your choir, please go make some dough or go driving around and you'll see okay, driving like this and driving like this. So, um, yes. Um, okay. когда, когда дирижер держит руки вот так, то у него голос и вся душа прячется в пятки от страха. Не у него, а у певцов, которые смотрят на эту грустную картину. Vladimir just said that when when a choir director holds his hands or her hands like this, uh, then it makes the singer's uh, heart and soul disappear into their heels because they're so scared of what's coming. Um, yes, I, I think, yeah, that's pretty scary. That's a pretty scary sight. I do not have my own choir yet. Would this be acceptable? Oh boy, yes. Better do it now. It's always better to prepare. And um, you can train, uh, you can you can do the training videos. You do not need to train with a choir. Of course, it's gonna be, you know, it's it's the real deal when you are in front of a choir and it's a little different when you're not, but you always train at home with, you know, in front of the wall or maybe in front of a video of a choir. Sometimes uh, Vladimir did, told me to train in front of different things. So, um, are the videos all in English or some Russian Slavonic? Uh, most of the videos are, are in English and uh, there's, I believe there's one in Russian with subtitles. Thank you so much. And I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.